Welcome back, everyone. How was lunch? Yeah, good. Yeah, excellent. <coughs> Anyone hit their rate limit on the buffet? I, so I've been in the API community for a number of years. And when I first was, I'm not sure that I would have believed that there would be an API evangelist for <laughs> an aircraft manufacturer. And yet there is. But I've now, I've now seen it all. I'm looking forward to uh, this section of the afternoon about large organizational change. We're going to kick it off with Nazar and Adrian from Airbus. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Nizar. I'm, I work at Airbus with, uh, with Adrian. And uh, well, we do APIs. That's why we're here today. Um, just a couple of words about, about Airbus really, really quickly, because uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows by now what, what we do. Um, at Airbus, our motto is, we make it fly, right? That's, that's, that's what we do. And when you think about it, um, never have we been making th so many things fly today. Like if you look, look at it, uh, drones, aircraft, helicopters, spacecraft, all these things fly. And at the same, at the same time, um, we're really busy designing all these things, like the flying taxis, all these, all these new technologies. And, um, and the gap between expectations and reality is, is being bridged more and more by, by all the business needs, all the, all the economic growth that we're trying to put in place. And um, that's where APIs come, uh, come into place. APIs are something that really allows us to uh, capitalize on our most critical assets. So what are our assets at Airbus? Well, basically, we've been doing this thing for more than 50 years, so uh, we have a really good knowledge on how to make things fly. And uh, APIs will allow us to unlock the data that is really hidden between layers and layers of uh, legacy systems. That's, that's the genesis of our API journey. <laughs> and um, that's how it all started, right? And uh, when we, when Midi offered uh, for us to come here on stage to present something around Airbus, with Adrian, we kind of uh, thought about it. And um, when, when, we, when we really uh, dig a bit deeper into the kind of subject that we uh, wanted to share with you guys, it was really something about um, what can this community really, uh, really understand here? It's my third edition at API Days this year. And um, what I really like about it is I've really seen the API community grow, right? Like, uh, we got here a bit, a bit earlier in the day, and, uh, and there we met Kai uh, at the entrance, and he told us, uh, quote, <laughs> uh, he told us, it feels like home. And you know what? It really does. It really does feel like home here. And if you look at all the API community, we've seen this grow in the years and years. And so what we wanted to share today was not something around how, how great our API program has been, because there's no real point in there. So we just, uh, we just wanted to uh, share findings and key takeaways. And what are those findings? So by now, pretty much everyone has started his API program, right? So we are at second year, third year for, our, for all of us. And we pretty much adopted the same tactics, the same, uh, the same organizational changes. Like we've seen a lot of talks in the past years about cultural change, right? Uh, we've seen a lot of talks about self-service, about whatever technology A, B uh, you, you could pick. And uh, we wanted to share how this journey evolves and how uh, at each stage you adopt a different tactic to solve a certain set amount of problems <laughs> and uh, what we learned from it. So the whole, the whole talk is, is based upon our return on experience and trying to um, give back to the community, because that's what API Day is all about. It's about giving back, and that's what we're going to try to do here. So I'm going to leave it to Adrian to give you a bit, a bit of history about uh, the genesis of, our, of the API program, how it evolved through the years. And at the end, I'll, I'll try to, uh, <coughs> to develop further on, on the takeaways. Okay? 
Adrian. Thank you, Nizar. Um, so, today I will uh, present you uh, our journey, uh, uh, API journey at Airbus. Uh, so here are all the tasks and challenges that we had during the last three years. Um, so I want to share the experience, and as I said, uh, um, Nizar uh, will give you some return on experience and some key takeaways. So we started our journey end of 2016 with three proofs of concept. So one with security, one with HR, and one with um, um, finance. And at this time, we didn't have so much clue about API management at uh, uh, compa company level. Um, so we wanted to see what we can gain from it, what are the perspective for us uh, in the future, and see also if it's possible to develop some APIs, for example, for HR, and see if they can be reused by finance uh, and security. So we did those proof of concept uh, during two months, and it has been a real success. So we decided to launch a global API strategy uh, at Airbus. So in 2017, uh, we started to think about a strategy for three years and um, to build um, the platform. So before to speak about the strategy, what is um, interesting to, to, to understand is that Airbus is a, a big organization. We have many different business domains. And to support those business domains, we have more than 2,000 IT applications registered in Airbus. So it means that the potential of um, um, APIs is just enormous. Here we can create thousands of APIs. Um, so it's the reason why we really need a strategy for scaling up, a strategy to be able to support all those APIs. Um, so we didn't want to do all, as all the operating models, so to be a, a center of expert, expertise, where a team is in charge of everything, to develop, to maintain, to support. And at the end, we are not able to scale, because the capacity to scale will depend on the size of a team, and very quickly will be, become a bottleneck for the business. The business will say, okay, you are not able to answer to my demand, you are slowing down my, my project, um, so we'll need to hire more and more people to be able to answer to the need from the business. So we prefer to be a, a center for enablement, so it means a team that will be the platform providing services and uh, tools to enable the others to design develop, maintain, support their own API thanks to our support on a centralized platform. And this for us was really uh, the way to be able to scale uh, uh, our API strategy. As I said, uh, we, here we have a, a potential of 1,000 APIs uh, in Airbus, so we didn't want APIs to proliferate everywhere in the company but in the shadow. So we had to provide the capacity to anyone in the company to discover and reuse the existing API, and to create value thanks to the things that the others developed. Uh, this will enable the developer to uh, focus on further development. Uh, the reuse will also speed up um, the development of new business opportunities, new kind of services um, to create innovative application, and also thanks to this reuse, we'll be able to reduce the service cost. So our strategy for the next uh, three years was really uh, to, to be at scale and uh, to focus on the reuse. So then, now we have the API strategy, so we have to build uh, the platform foundation. So before starting uh, anything, you have to think about make or buy. Do you want to buy a solution or do you want to develop everything? At this time, we didn't have a cloud platform at, at Airbus. Um, so we decided to uh, take an API management uh, provider uh, for our cloud part, but nevertheless, uh, for the on-premise, we, we still need to have an infrastructure. So we implement a lot of CI-CD pipelines, then we had um, to define the API patterns, we onboard some um, um, pilot project to develop the APIs, and then we had to get everything validated by security. This took us uh, practically one year. It took a lot of time, uh, but for us it was really important to spend this time to have the right foundation, because without uh, a good foundation you will not be able to scale, and we didn't want to have some troubles in the future, 
And uh, when you have to manage a lot of APIs, if you don't have a good platform, then this one can collapse. And uh, you will find some solution to, um, to, to avoid this. And then you will also improve, uh, you will increase the cost of your platform. So we took the time to build this uh, platform foundation, but uh, I think we did the, the, the right choice to really spend this time. Uh, so, building on 2018, we have approximately 20 APIs in production. And so now it's really time to ramp up. So, um, we very quickly we realized that people will not come uh, on the platform like that, even if all the team is really convinced uh, about the API strategy, about the value that will bring the platform. Um, so really had to evangelize, promote the platform, uh, the API strategy, and even the API technology. So for that, we did a lot of uh, internal events. Uh, we make videos, we make stickers, we make leaflets, we did some acculturation workshop, we did even uh, an API game uh, for the business to understand uh, what they could do with APIs. Um, so we did really communication, strong communication and marketing within the company to promote this, uh, this platform. This is one thing, it's, it's, it's what is really also very important, it's um, to do evangelization, to change the mindset uh, of the people in the company, to make them understand that it's really important to design good APIs uh, in order to have them reusable. Uh, by the others to get value that what has been created, but also for them one day to uh, consume what the others developed. Um, for us, it's also an architecture, architect, architectural change um, because we are building the A320 since 30 years uh, in Airbus. It's our best seller. And our the IT for manufacturing is, is really a, a legacy IT. Uh, with all architecture and so on. And we are digitalizing uh, the manufacturing, so we are building uh, uh, on top of this legacy. And sometimes it's really difficult to change uh, uh, the architecture, to go to new architecture, more real-time and, uh, and uh, event-driven uh, architecture. So we have to spend time uh, with architects to make them understand that they have to change uh, the architecture. So then, uh, user experience. So we started to have some trouble on the platform. Uh, we have to be honest. Uh, so we had a, an API um, uh, management provider. We had CID, CICD pipelines, so Jenkins, GitHub, logs in the LAN, logs in the cloud, different process if you want to de deploy an API in the, in, in the LAN or if you want to deploy the API in the cloud. And to be honest, for our developers, it was quite a nightmare. We were spending 80% of our, our support time just to help them to follow the, the process, even if we had uh, um, a, a, document, a strong documentation. So what we did, we built our own um, uh, developer portal uh, with um, agnostic, agnostic interface. Uh, so we hide all the things behind and we try to simplify really all the process. So now we are beginning of uh, 2019 and we have 100 APIs in, in production. And so now it's really time uh, to scale. Uh, so we have to automate everything. So as I said, we develop our API uh, developer portal where we already started to develop many things to make the user experience for our developer uh, uh, easier. But we have also to automate the platform to make the life of uh, people uh, working uh, from the team, make their life easier, but not only, also to uh, secure business operation. This is really important. Um, so we put a lot of things uh, to uh, make the platform scalable, so to be able to answer to, um, to the demand and to adapt to the de demand on real time. Um, then the resilience to put some automatic mechanism to see if we have an issue on, on the platform or on, uh, on an API in order to rebuild and redeploy everything. This is really important because if you have just 10 APIs, okay, you can redeploy them manually, it's fine. But when you start to have 500, 200, 1000 APIs, well, you can't uh, redeploy everything manually. So you should have mechanism to redeploy everything automatically. Uh, and then uh, reliability, so make sure that uh, operations are well understood and, um, and, and well performed. 
Last but not least, uh, the governance. So it's not a topic that arrived in 2019, so it's something that we had all along the way of our API journey. But uh, we discovered uh, on our 100 APIs that we didn't have all the time a, a good quality. So we have to adapt the, the governance. If you have a really strong governance, uh, you will have made probably a good quality, but the quantity will not be here. Uh, and if you have a lot of APIs, then the quality maybe will not be here. So we have all the time to adapt. We have to decide what we want to centralize, what we want to decentralize. At the beginning, at the beginning we were really centralized, and we started to decentralize some part of the process. But even this is quite difficult to know when we can decentralize uh, some part of the process. So it's, we have all the time, we, we need to continually uh, adapt um, uh, our governance. Uh, this was really a huge topic for us this year, and it will still be a huge topic next year. So this is our journey. Uh, we are end of 2019, and we have now around uh, 300 APIs in production. So I will let Nizar to give you some takeaways. Thanks. OK, so uh, as you may have seen, like um, the, the program has been there for, for three years now. And um, if, if you look at how, how it happens, uh, I'm pretty sure like uh, everyone has lived um, a similar journey. You start with doing a bunch of POCs because you think that you can you can leverage APIs. Then at some point in time, you're going to choose um, either to make or to buy a, a software vendor solution. And then you're going to maybe build a core team, start building some foundation APIs, authentication, whatever. And then you're going to little by little scale uh, up up to up to a certain state. So if if you if you want to be uh, if if you really want to scale the program. Um, you want to set up the pace, okay? It's all about the pace. If you build up enough speed in your organization for it to be able to accelerate later on, then uh, then the program is gonna is gonna get higher. Like if if you look at 2017, we only had 20 APIs. 2018 was a bit better with some, something around around uh, 80 or 90 or 100. And this year it's it's more than 300 with a high reuse rate. So. Uh, we've only seen the benefits later on. Okay, so that's what happens. Build the pace, and then at some point in time, you're going to see uh, see the the pace coming on, the speed coming on. Uh, what you need also to understand here is uh, the, sh the strategy evolves in all steps. The strategy that you're going to apply in uh, in year one is not the same in year two and in year three. In year one or year two, you are more, uh, you're, you're going to be a small team, a squad or something, and you're going to focus more on building your platform and building your services. Either you go for the option with a strong governance, and then you need to admit that you're not going to get uh, scale really quickly, but you're going to have really good quality and maybe higher reuse. So you need to make trade-offs. You cannot have, have it all, that's for sure. And uh, your team needs also to, to be able to change in front of each given step. So if you, uh, if you think that at some point in time what you want to do is quality, then you need to reorganize your team in a fashion so you can actually achieve quality. If at some point in time you want to uh, build more governance and automation, then you're going to reorganize your team to, to do it that way. So the more uh, you're able to bring agility in your organization, the more you're going to be successful in this program. If you just say, okay, so my plan is I'm going to do an API strategy in five years, I, I, I build a team this way, and you just um, execute it in five years, you're usually not, not going to be very successful at this. Try to reorganize at each given step and change your strategy whenever you, you see it fit. Um, <clears throat> well, obviously, uh, mindset takes time to change, and that's, uh, that, that's pretty much uh, a common finding in, in all API programs. So um, you just need to take that into account and, and, and understand that you're not going to be able to change mindset with just stickers or videos, right? It's just, gonna, it's, it's just something that's going to take you a lot of time. And uh, what you need to capitalize on are the people that are willing to do this. Uh, you need to identify like uh, the key data points, the key services that uh, that are in embedded in the business, and then you invest heavily on convincing those guys. You won't be able to convince everyone, obviously, so you need to choose who you want to convince. So uh, usually that's a pretty good tactic if you 
you want to attack a specific area in your business and, uh, and aim, for the, aim for the best. Um, we talked a lot about self-service, right? And uh, if, if you look at the numbers and you see the growth in, in, uh, in the past year, it's been thanks to self-service, obviously. But with self-service come many challenges, okay? First one is quality, right? Since you don't control uh, what people do on your platform, you're gonna have really good APIs, but you're also gonna have really point-to-point -point APIs. In, on 300, maybe we have 100 APIs that are no more, no, uh, no less than just point-to-point -point integration. Because that's, that's the whole point of self-service. You go in there, you expose your API, you do your integration, and there, then it's up into production. Um, so the drawbacks are, uh, number one is quality, number two is security risks, obviously, because since you don't control what is exposed, maybe you're jeopardizing uh, the security of your platform. That's something that you cannot control really easily with self-service. And um, when we talked about governance, you can see governance in many ways, right? You can see governance as um, guidelines, documentation somewhere uh, in, your, in your documentation system, and people, well, they maybe follow the camel case thing, or maybe they don't. Um, but you also can, uh, can see governance as a powerful tool if you uh, couple it with your portal, right? So you can, uh, you can use your portal as uh, one central part of your, of your strategy where people actually go into, into the portal, they type in their, the name of their API, they click create, and then all the automation stuff does whatever is needed on the platform, and then you have the good naming coming on. Or when you apply, um, uh, you, you hit the update version, you select major version, it's gonna go in for 1.0 to 2.0, minor version 1.1 and bug fix 1.1.1. So you actually implement the governance as, uh, as an automation in the, in the portal itself. And this way, it's a bit better. It becomes a bit better and a bit more tangible. So governance is not only uh, meetings and documentation. And um, one, one advice that, we could, that we, could, we could give you is focus on the key data and services. That's something that is really important. Usually when you look at, uh, at, at the IT system of, of big corporations and companies such as ours, well, it may seem really big, uh, 160,000 employees, I believe, or something. Um, but if you look at, if you try to map and do a blueprint of all the data and services that you have in your company, usually you're gonna have only four, five, maybe, maybe 10 congestion points. You're gonna have HR, you're gonna have manufacturing, you're gonna have um, whatever specific thing credits, and focus on those key data and services. And on, on those aspects, that's where you need to build the key services yourself. You cannot let that to, uh, to, you cannot afford to have a bad design on those services. You need to make sure that they are good. Because that's where you're gonna foster the, maxi the maximum amount of reuse. Um, other, th other aspect that is really important is marketing, okay? So if you don't know that an API exists, usually you're not gonna use it, right? It's like, it's like mobile phones. If you don't know that the app exists, you're never gonna download it. And same goes for, uh, for, for API reuse. If developers in your company don't know and are not aware of the existence of these uh, set APIs, they will not reuse them. So you need to make sure that you market the APIs as much as you design them. Uh, that's something that is really, really key here, uh, because if you want to foster the reuse, it's not only about good design, good, good performance, or whatever. It's also about good marketing, and that's something that we focused a lot, a lot on this year. And um, well, we've been successful for some, less for others. Um, and finally, uh, one thing that we we also uh, we also discovered is try to always keep a bit of margin for uh, your team to be able to build cross-silo APIs. Because uh, what usually happens is you're gonna have a business that's doing something that are going to develop APIs. Business number two is gonna, is gonna also do something and, um, and develop its own APIs. But what if you mix business number one and business number two and make them speak together and imagine a use case that goes uh, beyond um, just, just these two. Well, that's when magic happens, right? And um, always keep a bit of margin for you to invest on cross-siloed APIs because these ones will b bring the most value. 
And uh, well, so that's what we found out uh, in these past three years. And uh, if you have any questions, well, we can we can take some. Yeah, we <coughs> we're over time, so they're going to have to find you at, at okay. the afternoon break uh, for questions. But uh, join me in uh, applauding Nazar and Adrian. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We can go out that way.